In this video, we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about how to solve an equation that looks like this one by graphing. Uh, this idea, solving by graphing, applies to really any type of equation. Uh, you have to have access to a graphing utility. We're going to be using the website desmos.com. If you have a, a TI graphing calculator, you can get these equations graphed on that and, and find the intersection the same way as we're going to be utilizing the Desmos website. Uh, but what we have here is we have an exponential expression on the left side of this equation. The reason why it's exponential is because we have a number as the base and a variable in the power. And then we have another exponential expression on this side. So if we want to solve this, there, there are some techniques you could use with logarithms. But if you are able to use a calculator, whether it's an SAT problem or something that you're working on for your class in school, what you can do is you can get your graphing utility up. We're going to go to Desmos. So I just went to desmos.com. Now, if you've been to this site before, use some of the stuff. The scientific calculator is useful, but what we want to do is we want to do some graphing. So we'll just go ahead and get into the graphing menu. And what you have access to on the left-hand side is you have access to a big list of input lines that you can put your equations in with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up and just kind of bring it off to the side here so that we can view this along with my graphing tab. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to graph y equals. Now this is a little bit weird. This is the one thing that makes solving an equation by graphing a little bit odd. We are not looking at a y anywhere in this equation. What I'm actually going to graph is I'm going to graph the left hand side of this equation. So y equals 5 and then I just got to use a little caret to get an exponent there. So that's shift 7. Whoops, I got to stay in the exponent. Maybe I can figure out how to do this. I guess I need parentheses. Let me try this again. So caret parentheses x minus 1. There we go. So now I have the left-hand side of this equation graphed. If you're familiar with what exponential graphs look like, this shouldn't surprise you at all. We're, we're growing more and more quickly as we move across that graph. I'm going to go down to my second input line here, and I'm actually going to graph the other side of this equation. So y equals 2 raised to the x power. Oops, not to the second power, to the x power. And you see both of these equations are going to show up. And what we are looking for is we're looking for when this equation or th this function on the left-hand side, so that's the red graph that we see here, when this function equals this function, right? We want to know when these two things equal each other, right? And an equation has that equal sign in between. So when do the red graph and the blue graph equal each other? Well, they equal each other at this intersection. Now, I'm going to bring this back up a little bit larger so that this is my active screen. Now the cool thing about Desmos, you'll notice I just kind of did a, just a regular old click near that point. Uh, Desmos is automatically going to snap to the significant point that's near the area where you click or the area where you're scrolling your mouse. Uh, so in this case, that's the intersection. That's when the red graph and the blue graph equal each other. Now what we care about here is we care about the x value from this intersection point. So the solution to that equation that we were just looking at is 1.756. Uh, the y value that, that's corresponding to that, the 3.379, that's going to be what, if I click back to the equation, I'm going to have 3.379 equals 3.379 if I put 1.756 in for the x's. So the y value here is just what the two sides of the equation will both equal, but the x value that you see from this intersection that is the value that we plug in to generate the corresponding y values on either side of the equal sign. So the solution here, 1.756. We found it with the intersection. We did it with Desmos. You could have done it with a TI graphing calculator as well. And this works for any type of equation, right? If, if you had you know, trigonometric equations, if you had uh, logarithmic equations, linear equations, parabolas, cubic functions, whatever it might be, uh, you can solve this sort of way anytime you have access to the calculator and your teacher is okay with you giving a, a rounded off value. Uh, it won't find exact values uh, whenever they're irrational solutions. So that's the one downside to this process. But if the calculator is in play, you've got the green light to solve equations like this anytime your teacher allows you.